know what autism is? No? Do you know what autism is? Do you know what autism is? Which is best? I don't know. What's it? Well, isn't it, there isn't really a set description of autism. Isn't it kind of a spectrum of different diseases like Asperger's and stuff? And it's like a range of emotional problems and such and cognitive differences or whatever. Or like some kids like have temper tantrums and can't control it and other things like that. <laughs> Autism, I guess autism is a mental imbalance. Do you know what autism is? No, really. Don't. I have no idea. No. No. What? Do you know what autism is? No. It, it's, I don't know the exact medical term, but it's it's some malfunction of the brain where children that I've seen who have been autistic are, are super like high sensitivity. Um, I think they have a. I think one of the main things is, is that they have a really difficult time with change. Do you know what autism is? No. 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 Now, what is it? Could you tell how it is? What it is? Indeed, what exactly is autism? Autism, Asperger's, pervasive developmental disorders, are often referred to as spectrum disorders. So for example, people can have an autism-related condition and be profoundly mentally retarded. Somebody can have an autism-related condition and be an absolute intellectual genius. Everybody who has an autism-related disorder uh, has a very fundamental impairment in social understanding and relatedness with other people. I mean, years ago we would say there's one out of 10,000 births would be a child with autism. Now what are we saying? We're saying one out of, I want to say one out of 166. I think that's the latest statistic. And that is a multi-fold increase. But certainly something is happening, and this is happening globally. There are three elements to this film. We will be talking to experts in the field of autism, the parents of autistic individuals, and the individuals themselves. There isn't a moment's peace, literally, until Harrison is asleep. No, this is my room. If he's laughing, I have to be on edge because that laughter can turn immediately into crying. It's like a laugh crying, laugh crying. Someone always has to be on him. It's a constant thing. If I have to use the restroom, I have to tell the children, the older children, make sure Harrison doesn't go out. For the most part, like, I'm a little bit nervous for when he goes into school, like when he gets into the older grades, if the kids will tease him. But I know that Hopefully, with this film, kids will understand a little bit better what it's like to have autism, and hopefully that'll get them, get them to understand. He taught himself to read, which is great, but then he, like, he's not that verbal. Like, he can't really speak. He can't have a conversation with them as much, but uh, it makes up for it. Hey, Harrison. You got a camera. You want to see cheese? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Harrison. He has a very, very strong relationship with Megan. Megan is really like his second mother, and she sometimes understands things that I'm not getting. She'll be like, this is why he's crying, or, you know, and, or she'll rush to right away soothe him with something. And she gets it dead on. She's, it, it's just a natural thing. I always say, thank God. How does he show you he loves you? <laughs> he'll he just struggles. come. He, he's, he struggles with us, and he'll just come over and hug us sometimes. RDI, it's different from the applied behavior analysis therapy, which is so common. The ABA um, teaches, it, it, there's definitely positive aspects of it. It teaches, but more in a rote way. 
um, children how to do skills. Certainly if I need to teach Harrison how to brush his teeth, I would, I could start with ABA. Uh, it breaks down the skills and it teaches it step by step and reinforces as soon as the child does a correct step. RDI is different in that it focuses more, not so much on developing skills, but developing relationships. Um, overcoming, autism has, across the board, there are core deficits of autism and there hasn't really been a therapy that has addressed these core deficits which are um, inflexibility, um, which is very difficult. You can have someone be successful as far as graduating college, but then they can't hold a job because they can't work when it's raining or um, if the paper didn't arrive, it throws them off. So it addresses flexibility, um, it develops positive memories. If you are somebody with autism, you're lacking language, um, how to use language. So even if a child has language, they do not necessarily know how to use it in an appropriate way to get what they need. They lack coping mechanisms. They have um, very low frustration tolerance. So generally what behaviors might come about are a result of a specific skill deficit. So if a child does not have language and he or she is trying to communicate something and he does not have the language to communicate, he is going to use another behavior to communicate his wants and needs. Children with autism are able to talk. What they cannot do is communicate. And once typically developing kids understand that, it makes it a whole lot easier to start facilitating exchanges. Someone at David's school, not even someone in mental health, not even a psychologist, an administrator. Did they say that to you? Yeah. He said that David was emotionally disturbed. He was three. I said, how does a child at three become emotionally disturbed? He was not emotionally disturbed. He was and is autistic. He, su he said, um, he suggested I look into my marriage, and he sent me home to read Bruno Bettelheim's uh, completely outrageous um, The Empty Fortress which blamed the mother for the, and, and he's been um, completely discredited. And there was someone else, Dr. Leo Kanner, who called, um, who blamed the mothers and said they, um, it was due to, fr his term was refrigerator mothers. It, and of course both these, it, it, it's um, physiological, of course no one knows what causes autism, but it's certainly not an emotional disturbance and it's not the environment. By just like looking at you, I don't know what you're capable of until I put you to the test to see this, 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 or the other. If you could communicate with me, I could ask you. And you would say, I like making cakes, I like uh, you know, filming, I like this. So therefore, we have a set of things by sample and modeling, and then there's the way how we find out from him. And if he's able to communicate, we would ask him through sign language, and then he would respond. Based on that, then we find out what are his weakness, what are his strengths, and what his capabilities are, and we go from there. Our purpose is for them to be independent, have a better living, and to be productive, and our job never ends. Gyerkő 17 éves lesz most már, és amikor először jelentkezett ez a, tehát megváltozott az ő viselkedése, akkor még az autizmussal itt Magyarországon nagyon keveset tudtak az emberek. A, amikor ugye a, a problémák elkezdődtek, akkor ne, ő nem szabad, nem szabad. Légy szíves, érjék te magadhoz, kérdés. Ad ide a kezed. Jó? Úgy. Gyerek, ne csinálj! Ez sajnos ez mostanában, mostanában ilyen kubuska. Az autizmus a jelenlegi tudásunk szerint egy pervazív fejlődési zavar. A pervazív szó itt azt jelenti, hogy Körülhatárol a területeket érint, a kommunikációt, azt, ahogyan kapcsolatot teremtünk, azt, ahogyan elfoglaljuk magunkat, az érdeklődésünket, a játékunkat. De ezek a területek annyira fontosak, hogy áthatják az egész személyiséget, a viselkedést, a fejlődést. Pervazív, azt jelenti, hogy átható. Yeah. 
it's been um, a very mysterious blessing. It's just been, uh, it's, I don't know. I don't know how things work, <laughs> how things are arranged, and that's not really for me to say. <laughs> Over the course of your marriage, you really find out who you're married to. And my husband's first response was, we're not going to let anything get in the way of the joy we feel for our child. So I actually feel very fortunate to be his mom. I get to know him until the rest of my days. Hát ez nem az egyszerű dolog. Tulajdonképpen... Uh... Itt van! Szép! Itt! Itt! Anya! És itt a szagga! Na, megmutatod, hogy tudsz? Hogy is, hogy is, hogy jössz rá? Nem járunk el helyekre, a Krisztián nem lehet egyedül itthon hagyni, tehát mi nem mondhatjuk azt neki már ennyi idősen, hogy jó van, majd jövünk, és most elmentünk este egy moziba, mert őt nem tudjuk kire bízni. Ha bár van a család, és ők ha kell, akkor rájuk mindig számíthatunk, és ők mindenféleképpen segítenek, de igazából azért mi megpróbáljuk ezt magunk megoldani, és nem azért van a Krisztián, hogy mások felügyeljenek rá. És hirtelen, hogy megdermett a levegő, és, és tényleg, <gül> bocsánat, de gombolsz van turkomba. A dédi mama úgy hirtelen szólt, és azt mondta, hogy hallottátok gyerekek? Nem azt mondta, hogy a Jani papíhoz, nem azt mondta, hogy hallom. És négy év kellett, hogy elfogadja ezt a házat otthon állok. Bocsánat, de tényleg nem bírom be. Annyira, a Krisztián nem tud hazudni. De amikor, amikor átöleli a nyakamat, akkor az igazi, őszinte szeretetet jelez, is. És amikor ő ezt a házat elfogadta úgy, feldolgozta, hogy ez nem a Jani papi, hanem ez neki az otthona lesz, és ő azt mondta, hogy megyünk haza, hát ez mindenkit nagyon-nagyon. I was only diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome when I was 12 and a half years old. Um, took a while, went through a couple of different diagnoses before they finally diagnosed me with that. Um, I've been in quite a number of different schools throughout my life. Um, and had difficulty in many of them because they weren't really set up for people with Asperger's syndrome they were and they just throw different kids together with different issues we couldn't really find an appropriate school placement and I was at the ones I was in also they weren't giving me a, a good enough education because the school wasn't set up for people like that. I, I have always been ahead of grade level. I've always been a quick learner. And the schools weren't equipped to handle that. Az ő önállóságukat uh, apró, látható kapaszkodókkal segíthetjük. Mi ezt úgy hívjuk, hogy vizuális segítségek. Pakulj el! Mm -hmm. our life and this is you know a lot of people don't like to have index cards labeling everything in their house that doesn't bother me um, but making making it a place where the kids can be in every room is huge that there's no place that they can't go and do I was saying how you know we don't have a coffee table we don't have lamps and um, breakable things I had a full-time job I was a teacher and I always imagined staying home with my children when they were younger and, and going back and I don't think that's on the horizon at all. Our six-year-old, Abby, is essentially nonverbal. She's learning to speak. She has an augmentative communication device. 
So all of the words in her world we've kind of posted. Now our son takes a lot of them down and relabels things. So the couch says refrigerator and stuff like that. But um, it helps Abby to take the word and match it to the picture and, and get to know what they are. So all of these are for Abby. All the rooms are set up so the kids have free reign. And we have two rooms in the house that we use as therapy rooms with the children's teachers this after school. This is one of them. It's sort of a mess, but you kind of get the point. We're happier with smaller things. If we make it through the grocery store, we're like, ooh, good day. <laughs> you know, um, we took them on vacation. And, and granted, we took a teacher with us, but we had gone to Sesame Place. And that was just, it was amazing. We were just thrilled to be out in the world and having everyone kind of follow along. And I remember the first time we went to dinner together as a family. <laughs> You know, out in the public, which was never could be done because they would never sit still. Yeah. And you know, of all places, it was a place, you know, like McDonald's. But we sat there, the kids were sitting, they were eating their food, and we're like, wow, this is the first time we've ever had and, dinner. And a couple said to us, oh, your children are so well behaved. And I, it was all I could do to keep them, like, yeah. bursting into tears. I was like, okay. <laughs> but, but things uh, that are, you know, routine for typical families, for us, they're a challenge. Yeah, whether. But it's great this, just to have a small goal like that. She's more like the children in class than she's not. And to not be afraid of her. That for a long time we did try and get Megan to play like the other kids. And then we realized that's not very helpful. So now we've taught the other kids to play with Megan. So um, there are little girls that will take Megan's face to look at them and say, Hi, Megan. Take Megan's face to look at them and say, Hi, Megan. Hi, Megan. And, you know, until she says hi back or... Um, they'll sit with her to play with her and, and do the things that she likes to do. There are other days where, you know, you don't even want to get out of bed. You spend the day with your friends who have typical kids and they're screaming at them and, oh, my daughter talks too much. I'm like, are you kidding me? Oh. The physical therapy for Megan is help with her gross motor skills, her large muscle group. She's very awkward in her gait. She also has really long legs, so maybe that's part of it. Um, so that's that. But occupational therapy is more for fine motor skills and building hand strength for things like handwriting and, and speech is working on not just um, diction, I suppose, is the word for it, but you know, all the things that go into speech, learning pronouns and all the things that in normal conversation children will develop, they need to be taught that specifically. The ABA um, can teach anything. Everything we have as a family, I say, is a result of that. Now, Applied Behavior Analysis, ABA, is a type of behavioral intervention that involves breaking down a task or a learning experience into uh, the individual segments. We're using reinforcement, we're using punishment, we're using different tools to help change behavior and build behavior where, for example, when I was talking about skill deficits, in order to build a skill is a behavior. It's an observable, measurable behavior that we want to see, and we use applied behavior analysis in order to do so. Um, there's also what a lot of people think of in terms of ABA is discrete trial teaching or discrete trial learning. And discrete trial learning is a very, very small aspect of applied behavior analysis. And it involves a therapist and an individual working one-to-one, -one, usually at a table in a very contrived environment. So when the therapist will give an antecedent or give a command to the individual, the individual will exhibit a behavior and then a consequence will be given for that behavior. So for example, if I'm trying to teach you colors, I might have a series of colors in front of you and I'll tell you, and I want to teach you red, I'll tell you touch red. And if you touch red, I'll reward you with something that you find rewarding. And hopefully, next time I'm presenting you with colors, you'll choose red again. And I will know that I reinforced that behavior of being able to identify red. Teach you red here, apply behavior analysis, I would take you away from this little table environment. We may go out in the real world and we'll look at a fire engine and we'll look at a balloon and we'll look at candy and ice cream and I'll reinforce this is red and this is red and this is red. Ez egy egész életre szóló megoldandó feladat a mi részünkről és az ő részéről ez pedig ez egy maradandó állapot. Mindegy, hogy milyen szakképesítése van, mindegy, hogy mit tud ő dolgozni, végül is csak olyan munkahelyre, úgynevezett védett 
munkahelyre kerülhet el. Igen, mi az a szerelem? De ezt, ezt ismered, ez nem lehet rossz. Ezt nem tudom, melyik mint ez. Titkaim. Titkaim, nem is Igen. Tegnap komolyan mondtad, nyomkodtam, tegnap komolyan? Igen. A pót, kereken. Teljesen. Ez nyugtatja meg őt. What do you think general ed kids should know about someone with Asperger's, let's say, back in those early grades? What should those kids and those teachers have known about you? They should just understand, like, what, like, this, like the reasons behind it. If someone gets frustrated, like, if an Asperger kid is frustrated, maybe to try to help them out better, like, like just ask them what's the ma like, what's wrong, and if they tell you, just say, just try to help them out instead of like immediately jump to the conclusion that they're being misbehaving. Don't react when they react because that make them react even more sometimes. Well, something like that happens with me. Like if someone reacted, I would react even more, and they wouldn't. They would just go back and forth, get worse. They put me in a speech program, but that was like that was completely inappropriate. They were doing articulation and all. They weren't doing any like pragmatic social. It was like they just threw me in there because it was. Oh yeah, I had a lot of difficulties too. I couldn't understand many people as well. I had a lot of difficulties making friends. People would push me in the hallways, people would write nasty things in my locker, they would break, one person actually broke in and wrote really mean things in my locker. I just feel like unhappy, like I feel like I don't belong, like I'm, like they, they probably, they would call me stuff like retard or stupid and they'd call me that all the time and I felt like they were just like being just against me all the time. Were teachers helpful in that regard? No. They weren't very, they, not that they weren't nice, they just didn't understand. If I got upset they thought I was misbehaving and they thought I had content disorder because I get upset all the time and they wouldn't understand so they thought I was just misbehaving and acting out. Szerintem ez először nem jelent hatalmas traumát, csak egy pár nap múlva, tehát egy idő után veszi észre ezt az ember, hogy gyakorlatilag ez mit jelent ez az egész dolog. És, Az első felismeréskor az ember rögtön az van a fejébe, hogy azonnal menni, menni és tenni a gyerekkel, bármit megpróbálni, csak segítsenek rajta, és, és aztán napok múlva jön a másik, ez a nagyon megdöbbentő és nagyon lesújtó felismerés, hogy, hogy a gyermekem soha nem fog teljes életet élni, és, és, és ezt ez, 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 ez nem lehet elmondani, tehát ez egy olyan, mintha az ember belezuhanna egy mély szakadékba, és csak onnan néznek ki, mert gyakorlatilag még akkor sem szembesül azzal, hogy mit jelent ez valójában majd a hétköznapokban, majd a később életére nézve a gyereknek, hogy mennyire ö, peremre szorul és mennyire izolált lesz az egész családnak az állapotok. Hát Bence ugye az iskolai tanulmányait egy speciális iskolába kezdte, ami Magyarországon egyedülálló volt ami nagyon pici kis létszámmal működött, egyére szabott fejlesztést, egyére szabott oktatást biztosított, fejlesztő pedagógusokkal is kimondottan erre specializálódott emberekkel, és borzasztó helyzetbe kerültünk. Két héttel az iskolai kezdés előtt mondták, hogy vége a sulinak, és hát én megkerestem az Eszterke iskolájának az igazgatóját, és Ő volt olyan nagyon-nagyon kedves, és tőlük ez egy hatalmas áldozat, hogy Bencét bevállalták. Mi először azért megijedtünk ettől a problémától, hiszen Bence már olyan mértékű autizmusban szenved, ami, amire nem vagyunk fölkészülve, tehát amihez már tényleg megfelelő szaktanára lenne szükség. Én elsősorban a biztonságot igyekszem a Bencének megadni, tehát egy kapocs szeretnék lenni, hogy tudjon kihez menekülni kihez kérdésekkel, problémáival fordulni, tehát én egyben próbálok neki segíteni. A tanulásban pedig fejlesztő pedagógusok járnak az iskolába, és ők próbálnak egy egyéni tanmenet alapján, fejlesztési terv alapján foglalkozni a bencével. Can you tell me what schools you've been to? to college, um, Princeton for college, yeah. Cornell for graduate. Um, you went to Princeton? For mathematics. For mathematics? And yes. And you had been diagnosed with learning disabilities? Which I did not mention on the application. I probably knew 
about two and a half or something like that. But he was my first child, and it's very hard to know with your first child. I know that I had a Dr. Spock, and I wrote down how many words he had. I knew he was only parallel playing. He wasn't really playing with other children. Um, most of these kids have never heard what their diagnosis is because the parents think of it as kind of a disease. In some ways, they're frightened. I think all any parent wants is, you know, you'll say, oh, I want my kid to grow up happy. Um, what I want for them is independence. I want them to be able to choose where they live and choose where they work, and I want them to have friends and feel loved, and, and that's, that's my goal for them. His future. You know what? I, I really don't think about it. I really don't think about it. I can't think about it. Um, it's not that I'm pessimistic. Well, part of me is afraid to think too positively because I've done that and I've been disappointed. Um, so I don't want to be too pessimistic either. I think it's just safer for me not to think about the future right now. I have hopes that he will be happy. Tehát amíg mi élünk, addig biztos közegben vannak és biztonságban vannak, de mi lesz, ha nem leszünk? Ez a borzasztó félelme minden családnak. Ez a legnagyobb félelme szerintem, hogy mi lesz, ha majd meghalunk, akkor mi lesz velük. Actually, children with autism learn better from other kids, especially social things, than they do from adults. They understand what you're saying. So, even if they don't answer, don't be mad and like, don't try to like say anything that you wouldn't say to anyone in front of their face because they understand what you're saying. They just choose not to answer back.